This highlight of the moment has been brought to you by the National Advertising Challenge, where big brands get big ideas. Learn more at nationaladvertisingchallenge.com. I think we overinvest in internet businesses and we over obsessed about China because they were just two incredibly potent narratives. Now, I'm not saying, by the way, that the internet isn't a very important source of innovation. It patently is. And I'm not saying that the growth of the Chinese economy isn't important. It certainly is as well. OK, but India's pretty important and was growing nearly as fast as China. And what tends to happen, I think, and it worries me a bit because we should be investing more in innovation across the board. But what tends to happen, I think, in the investment community is they basically have defined Internet stocks, which you indulge massively because that's where innovation happens. And then you have real world stocks, which you treat with a kind of tailorist, you know, money grubbing, uh, exploitative approach to profit maximization. OK, and so you have these two chunks of capital, one of which is basically sucking money out of conventional established businesses and brands and essentially indulging those brands which can define themselves as in the Internet innovative space. Now, there's no reason why innovation can't come from chocolate companies or Unilever or from, uh, you know, conventional existing financial services companies. OK. But they're not allowed to innovate because innovation means Internet or global expansion means China. And so I think that the extent to which an interconnected world suffers because everybody tends to revolve around the same narratives and therefore they tend to chase the same metrics as everybody else. And I think that's a problem because um, the world works actually through diversity, not through uniformity in many ways. You know, capitalism works because lots of different people are trying lots of different things. And if you get this kind of what I call MBA capitalism, where everybody uses the same language, they optimize for the same metrics and they all obsess about the same what you might call measures of comparison, then you actually make capitalism worse, not better. You know, we are kind of parroting certain narratives to an extent which I think is largely driven by people always feel comfortable saying the same thing as everybody else. You know, we're a, we're a herd species to some extent. Being a dissenter, apart from anything else, is just very tiring. You know, at some point it's just easier to go along with the, you know, the, the, the preset narrative. And it, 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 it's why it's very difficult being a creative person in an advertising agency, because the thing that drives you is a kind of fear of the obvious because your whole job is to question assumptions. And so generally you're having to go and question assumptions and, um, uh, and, and you come along with this massive fear of the obvious, which is the one thing I can't say is the thing they expect me to say. And of course, you're having to sell your ideas to people who for very many reasons have a great deep love of the obvious. You know, when in doubt in business, do something obvious. Nobody ever gets fired for doing the obvious thing.